All right, here's a couple more examples on how to factor more general type of trinomials. Again, we call the general type the ones that have a non-1 in front of the x squared term. And then if you look at this one, you say, oh, wait a minute, there's no x squared term in the front there, there's an x q term, what do I do? But then you realize that all three terms have an x in them. That means you can already factor out an x. So you can say this is equal to x times 15x squared minus 19x minus 10. And now you can go ahead and factor this, and you just keep carrying the x along as you go. But again, since the first term does not have a 1 in front of the x squared term, you probably want to rewrite this as x times 15x squared minus 10, and the middle term is going to be split up into the sum of two middle terms, and you're looking for those, those two coefficients. The rule is that the sum of the two numbers that you're looking for must equal minus 19, and the product must equal to the product of the outer two terms. So it must equal to a positive 15 times a negative 10 or a minus 150. So now here you're looking for two numbers. When you add them together, you get a minus 19. When you multiply, you get minus 150. Notice when you multiply and get a negative number, that means that one must be positive and the other one must be negative, and the negative number is 19 bigger than the positive number, or I should say the difference between them is 19. All right, so how about negative 20 and a positive 1? Well, that gives you negative 20, which is not 150. All right, let's jump a few numbers. Let's try, how about minus 15 and a Oh, I need to go up. I can go down. This needs to be a bigger number. How about minus 25 and a positive 6? Right? Again, when I add them together, I get a negative, ne negative 19. And 6 times 25 is a minus 150. Oh, there you go. I got it right off the bat. Minus 150. So that's the same number as here. When I add them together, I get a minus 19. So the two numbers I was looking for is a minus 25 and a positive 6. So it goes in here, minus 25x and a positive 6x. Close the bracket. There we go. All right, now I'm ready to continue. The trick again is to group them together into two groups of two. I factor out a common factor out of each group. So the first group, the common factor is 5x, and I'm left with a 3x minus 5. Again, if you want to make sure you did it correctly, you multiply back in. 5x times 3x gives you 15x squared. 5x times the minus 5 gives you minus 25x. Over here, it looks like I can factor out a 2, and I'm left with a 3x minus 5. Anytime you see this as being the same, you know you're in pretty good shape. So now you go ahead and look at these two terms. You realize that the 3x minus 5 is common for both terms, so you can factor that out. So you're left with an x times a 3x minus 5, and what you have left on the left side is a 5x, and on the right side is a plus 2. And you're done. You have factored your original trinomial. All right, nothing like practice makes perfect. Let's do the next one and see if you can apply the technique on this next problem. Again, you're going to rewrite that problem, that trinomial, in terms of something having two middle terms. So the 13x is going to now be written as a sum of two trinomial of, or two uh, terms that add up to 13x. The rule is that when you add them together, the sum must equal 13. So whatever the coefficients are here, they must add up to 13. And the product of the two numbers you're looking for equals the product of the outer two numbers. So the product should equal the 9 times the 4 which is equal to 36. So now you're looking for two numbers. When you add them together, you get 13. When you multiply, you get 36. So you say, well, 6 and 7 add up to 13. So 6 times 7, well, that's 42, which is not the right number. You're looking for 36. Hmm, how about 8 and 5? 8 and 5, well, that gives you 40, which is still not the right number. You're looking for 36. How about uh, 9 and 4? So you try 9 and 4, 
And bingo, that adds up to 36. That's the same numbers there. So the two numbers you were looking for are 9 and 4. So you plug those in here, plus 9x and plus 4x. So again, we have the same written down, but instead of 13x, we write it as a sum of two terms. Now we group them together, just like we did over here. The first group looks like we could factor out a 9x. So this is equal to 9x, and we're left with an x plus 1. And over here, it looks like we could factor out a 4, and you're left with an x plus 1. And again, that looks pretty good because we have an x plus 1 here and an x plus 1 there. So now we can look at this term and this term and realize we can factor out the common x plus 1. So this is equal to x plus 1, and you're left with a 9x on the left side, and you're left with a plus 4 on the right side. And there you go. There's your factored form of 9x squared plus 13x plus 4. So I'm hoping you're starting to see how this works. So if you follow this technique in this fashion, these are not that difficult.